Well, would you look at that? It's turtle time! In this episode of Turtle Reviews, I will be doing a spoiler-heavy overview and then a brief review of the issue. It's number two, TMNT versus the Mausers. It's found in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate Collection Volume 1. I'm going to provide a link down in the description box down below if you would like to purchase this from Amazon. Now, let's get into that spoiler-heavy overview of issue number two. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number two from Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird was printed in October 1984. This issue is titled TMNT vs. The Mausers. Now we kick off this issue with a sweet image of Raphael with his size out shouting, Kiss your butt goodbye! Raphael and Michelangelo are sparring each other in the living room of their secret home under the streets in the storm drainage system of New York City. Now Donatello is working on a circuit board, Leonardo is reading a Dune novel, and Master Splinter is focusing in on the news, calling on Leonardo to pay close attention to it. Live on the TV, a reporter is speaking with a Dr. Baxter Stockman about the city's rodent problem. Dr. Baxter Stockman has created robotic devices called Mausers, and they are rather bulbous in their design. These robots are to roam the storm drainage system and target rodents such as mice and large rats. As Dr. Stockman is talking about his invention, we go back to a panel focusing close up on Master Splinter with a concerned look on his face. I mean, why wouldn't he be concerned? He is a giant rat. And the news program continues. A demonstration of the Mauser is televised. The Mauser was placed in a complicated maze with mice throughout. The Mauser successfully finds the rats and brutally chomps them down its robotic gullet. Each Mauser has a storage capacity of about five rats. Once its storage is maxed out, the unit will return to an assigned drop point controlled by a remote mother unit. Dr. Baxter Stockman guarantees that the city will be pleased with the Mausers that he and his assistant April have been working on. We move away from the news panels and go back into the drainage system where Raphael and Mikey are still fighting each other, things get out of control, they crash into some furniture. Uh, Leonardo asks Splinter his thoughts on the Mausers, and Splinter tells him that he needs to meditate on that news, but as for the Turtles, they need to be extremely cautious. Time has moved on, a couple weeks have gone by, and the Mausers have been hard at work cleaning up the city's rat problem. Now, Dr. Stockman's assistant, April, is reading a newspaper, and she's stumped just as much as the police in New York City are, because there's been several bank robberies taking place. Uh, the vaults have been drilled into from underground. April then says out loud, she's in front of Dr. Baxter, uh, is it possible that the Mausers are doing this dark deed? And Dr. Stockman he just shrugs it off and he's like, April, come on, you helped me program these devices. You think that we'd be robbing banks? April just won't let it go. He, she keeps talking about it. It's too coincidental that they've created these robots to roam the undercity, you know, the storm drainage system, and now all of a sudden there's these bank robberies uh, where the vaults have been broken into from underground. So just too coincidental. April just won't stop talking about it. And then Baxter's like, you know what, April? Come here, I want to show you something. He takes her to this elevator. It's a secret elevator. She's never seen it before. They get in, they go down, and she's shocked because they go down below the basement. The elevator stops. It runs a security scan of the occupants inside the elevator. April, she's just like, wow, this is crazy. The elevator doors open to a laboratory, a secret laboratory, that uh, Dr. Stockman has. Now, she is completely stunned when she sees through a window that leads out into the the undercity, the uh, storm drainage system, just right outside of a, the laboratory window. There is an ocean of Mausers. And then April, you know, figures it out. She's like, okay, Baxter, you did it. You're robbing banks. You didn't have enough money to create but only two dozen of these Mausers. And there are about 200 of them right outside the, this laboratory. So Baxter decides to spill the beans and tells April his whole plan. He has Mausers going throughout the city, chomping at the foundations of skyscrapers and other important buildings so that he may hold the city ransom. Now if the city won't pay up, well, he will have his Mausers completely destroy the foundations of those selected buildings and bring them tumbling down with all the people inside. Now April wants to know why he needs so much money, more truth spills out of Baxter. He says the money is just an added bonus, but the real reason he's doing all this crazy nonsense is because it's fun. April will not let this stand. 
She knows it's wrong. It's evil. She's got to go to the authorities. That's her plan. She goes to the elevator to get out, but realizes that she does not have a security card to access the elevator. Well, Baxter, he triggers a secret door that opens up underneath April, ejecting her from the laboratory. She lands in a puddle of nasty, murky water. She's upset. She yells up, Baxter, you slime puppy! Then she gets up and runs off into a tunnel with hopes of getting out of the tunnels and back onto the streets of New York City. Dr. Baxter Stockman programs a few Mausers to hunt April down and dispose of her. Now April is lost in the tunnels, feeling panicky. She hears an odd noise, then realizes that Baxter has sent the Mausers after her. Now she runs into the dark, trips, falls, now cornered by three Mausers. Then April can't comprehend what she sees next and faints. Three Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles save the day, destroying the Mausers, Raphael, Donatello, Leonardo rescued April from a disturbing death. Now the Turtles take April back to their hideout, and April eventually wakes up. She's calm. She realizes, okay, these uh, creatures around me are real. I guess I'll talk to them. Splinter introduces himself and the four Turtles, and April, of course, wants to know where they came from. So Splinter tells her. And we get a cool picture of Leonardo with a text that says, For the origin story of Splinter and the Turtles, see issue number one. As April and Splinter are talking, one of the Turtles turns on the TV, and a live news program is covering a terrorist threat. The unidentified terrorist gives his demands through a recorded videotape that he sent to the news station. Now, his face is hidden in shadow, so the, nobody knows who he is. We do. It's Baxter. Now, he demands $20 million, or one of the World Trade Towers, is going to fall. In the videotape, the terrorist holds a model of the Retzab building. It's like a skyscraper. He crushes it, and then it ends. It goes back to the news report, and as the reporter is signing out, he's in front of the Retzab building, okay? It starts to fall. It was destroyed. The terrorist destroyed the building. Now, luckily, no one was in it because they, they got the videotape in advance, so the fire and police got all of the people out to safety, so that's good. Upon seeing this, April breaks into tears, and the turtles stand ready to take action. Splinter sends April to guide the turtles back to Baxter's laboratory so that they can take care of business, and they soon find it. Silently, the turtles make their way into the laboratory, coming in through that secret door from the floor. Leonardo sneaks up behind Dr. Stockman, rests his katana blade on his shoulder, and says, Your reign of terror has ended. This definitely surprises Dr. Baxter Stockman. There's a struggle. Baxter breaks free from the turtle's grasp, hits a switch that is the self-destruct switch for the Mausers. He tells them, Well, guys, you done did it now. The Mausers are on their way back to the secret laboratory, and they're going to destroy everything here, including you. And then Raphael knocks out Baxter. April and the Turtles don't want to stick around for the Mausers to show up and witness this self-destruct sequence that Baxter has uh, begun. So they go to the elevator shaft. Maybe they could take the elevator up, get out of there. Well, when the doors open, a bunch of rebel falls out. There's nowhere for them to go. Donatello, who's pretty tech savvy, says, hey April, you helped design these things. Why don't we try to break that uh, self-destruct sequence that Baxter initiated? So, while Donatello and April head over to a computer to try to figure that out, Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael dig around to see what they can find in the laboratory. They find some plastic explosives. They go back out into the storm drainage system to plant these plastic explosives in hopes to defeat these Mausers. They plant the explosives, they light the wicks, and then they hear the Mausers. They're coming. They're coming fast. And there are a lot of Mausers. It's not just a few. It's a lot of them. They're not slowing down. And any moment that an explosion should be going off. But it doesn't stop them. No. Uh, it slows them down a little, but it doesn't stop them. They start eating their way up out of the rubble to attack the turtles. Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael are doing a pretty good job holding their own against these Mausers. But they are getting overwhelmed pretty quick. They need a new plan. They're going to run back to the laboratory to see if Donatello and April have figured out a way to get these Mausers to stop. The group is back together in the laboratory. Donatello, April, working desperately to shut these things down. They're being surrounded by the Mausers. Leonardo says, turtles die with honor. He's got his katana ready to strike another Mauser. Then everything goes black. Victory at last. 
Donatello in April, shut the power down. And that wraps up the overview for TMNT issue number two. Now for the character, I'm going to talk about um, just two real quick. We've got Dr. Baxter Stockman. He's a madman doing his evil deeds for fun. I like that there's no closure for him in this issue. Kind of like in issue one, we didn't see an actual body of Uraku Saki, a.k.a. the Shredder. Um, I thought the end of this issue, we'd, we'd see Dr. Baxter in handcuffs being taken away by the police. But we did not see that. So maybe we'll see him again later on in another issue. Now, if you do know the answer to that, don't tell me in the comments because I like I want to be surprised. And now to Donatello. This is the second turtle with a defined trait. In issue one, we learned that Raphael has a short fuse. He's the no-nonsense turtle. He has an intense rage built up on the inside of him, uh, always ready to strike. But with Donatello, he is very good with technology. Uh, in the beginning of the issue, Raphael and Michelangelo were doing their sparring. Donatello was working on a circuit board. And of course, at the end, he's the one hacking into Dr. Stockman's computer to override the system. So he he is the tech savvy turtle. Raphael is the angry turtle. So for my overall thoughts, I like this issue just as much as I did issue number one. Now, in the first issue, their life's mission was complete. They were created from, you know, the ooze, obviously, but Splinter raised them up for one purpose, to defeat Urokusaki, the Shredder. They did that. So now in this issue, they have a newfound purpose, to protect New York City. I, I really like the art style in this one. I like, I like how the creators continued to trade off. One will do the text, one will do the art, and then they flip-flop. I think that was really cool. Keeps it consistent. And they both really have the same style because it's hard to tell the difference between who takes over and does what. I was very pleased and surprised by some of the stuff that happened in this issue. Dr. Stockman, he's a crazed lunatic mad scientist who created robots to uh, kill mice, okay? That wasn't the real plan. He wanted to go rob banks, and then he held a city hostage. You know, in his recorded video message that he sent to the news, he was holding a, uh, a skyscraper model in his hand, and then he, cr like, crushes it. And then it cuts to the news guy, who's like, okay, well, I guess nothing's gonna happen, so we're gonna go ahead and sign off. And then the building behind him collapses, Dr. Baxter Stockman is a lunatic. I also like how we end the comic in the laboratory where all this stuff happens. We don't go back to the hideout to Master Splinter. Did the Mausers find Splinter? I know that it showed a very graphic image of the Mausers eating rats. There's like blood dripping down the robot's face and everything. Horrifying. Did these guys find the hideout and fight Splinter? Is Splinter okay? Maybe we'll touch on that in issue three. We'll see. I'm looking forward to it. There is a two-page spread, which was pretty rad. After the explosion in the tunnel where the turtles are fighting the Mausers, uh, the artists explain in the annotation section of the collection, Volume 1, that uh, they were very proud of the two-page spread, which had a 3D design to it. It's also mentioned in the annotations, one of the creators says the last page of issue two is their favorite in the entire Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. That's pretty neat. I like the last page. I found it pretty humorous. There's just uh, Leonardo who says, I guess it worked. <laughs> so uh, it's quite humorous, and it's just like it's a lot pretty dark because the power goes out, but you can still see everything that's going on. Raphael has a Mauser stuck on his side. It's very cool. Uh, so do I recommend that you read Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number two, TMNT versus the Mausers? Well, of course I do. For the rating, I give this an A+. Plus. Well, looks like turtle time has passed. Um, if you would like to purchase the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Ultimate Collection Volume 1, I have provided a link down in the description box below. Please go check that out there. Uh, find me at thegeeksaddict.com and find me across all social media at The Geeks Attic. Have a good one. Cowabunga, dudes!